sport. Winning is what it's all about. But how do you win? This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. If we want to learn about the exploits of some of the earliest warriors and the weapons they fought with, we need only look in the Bible. The Old Testament gives a detailed military history of the 12 tribes of the Israelites and their fight for survival. This time on Conquest, we experience the weapons of the Bible. The lands of the Bible are squeezed between the Mediterranean Sea and the desert. To the north is Syria and Asia Minor. To the south, Egypt. To the east, the empires of Mesopotamia. This area used to be called the land of Canaan. It's only 70 miles wide, and it's absolutely essential in a strategic position as the sole land bridge between Eurasia and Africa. In times of peace, it was essential for commerce. In wartime, essential for military maneuver. The Israelites controlled most of this land for most of 12 centuries. We're going to find out how they did it, and you are going to learn how to win with the weapons of the Bible. In the 18th century BCE, there was a great movement of peoples from the east into the eastern Mediterranean, of which the major group were the Hyksos. They invaded Egypt and defeated the mighty Egyptian army, who were equipped with inferior weapons of stone, wood and early bronze. The Hyksos succeeded partly by military technology. They had superior bronze weapons and the ultimate shock force of fast chariots and an excellent missile weapon, the Asiatic Composite Bow. Now, this was of recurved design, made of horn and sinew with an effective range of 200 yards. The only disadvantage of this was that it was extremely difficult and expensive to make and often took up to a year to finish. Now, these modern copies are 55 pounds draw weight which is extremely strong for a small bow, and uh, so strong, in fact, I'm going to need help stringing it. So, could you give me a push? Now, these were truly powerful weapons. From now on, massed archery ruled the battlefield. So, you'd better learn how to use these. Archery was so effective in this period because good armour was rare. Most was of stiffened cloth or leather, sometimes strengthened with scales of bronze, with helmets of hardened leather or bronze. Eventually, Egypt expelled the Hyksos by copying the weapons of their enemies, especially the bow and the chariot. By the time of the New Kingdom in Egypt, the Israelites were treated as a hostile population. Sometime during the 13th century BCE, they were led out of bondage in Egypt by their leader, Moses. Later, under Joshua, they began the conquest of the land of Canaan. At this time, the Israelites were still nomadic. They were a collection of individual Bronze Age warriors. They fought with a spear and javelin, bows and slings, clubs, many types of axes, swords and shields. These are the classic weapons of the ancient period, but what's important is what they were made of. Now, they still used flint and stone warheads and blades, and these could be extremely sharp, but they had to be short and they often shattered on impact. The best blades were made of metal. The first metal blades were made of copper, but this is an extremely soft material. But if you take seven parts copper to one part of tin, you get an alloy called bronze. Now here's a nice new shiny bronze axe head. This was a very much harder material and could take a good edge, but you still had to be careful with it. It was brittle and it could blunt very easily. And in the Middle East, bronze was often of poor quality because of the rarity of tin, but it made some good weapons. Right, team, it's time we learned how to use these bronze weapons. And the one thing you won't be doing with them is any kind of Hollywood sword play, like this. Bronze weapons simply will not stand up to this. These are modern steel copies. Let's look at the real thing. First, with a long sword. 
it's absolutely pointless to try and think of any kind of cuts against bronze armor or bronze shields. All you're going to do is blunt your sword. Also, you're not going to be able to take any kind of parry. Do you thrust at me? There's a good chance that your sword or mine will break, so don't allow your sword to be cut down onto. Now, these aren't useless weapons, but you just have to rethink your whole idea of sword play. You push shield against shield, and you try and find the gaps, the unarmored places on the body, low on the leg, up to the face, into the gut. Now, there were various different types of swords called kopesh. Now, these are based on an Egyptian design. It's almost impossible to believe that this sort of sword was actually used, but they're shown throughout antiquity, so they must have been used somehow. One like this would certainly be used as a cutting, slashing weapon. I would try and smash your shield aside and then come in with a head cut to smash right through it, cleave through it, and through you. Now, the bronze spearhead meant that the spear could really come into its own as a fighting weapon. Spear fighting technique is a whole technique to itself. There's all kinds of thrusts and parries. If you parry too far out, don't, because I can come under and in. Now, the short spear, the javelin, the bronze head made it a much more effective weapon. It made it much better balanced and a much deadlier weapon. Now, there were many different types of axe. Everything from this double-handed monster to this nice, short, sharp one. Now, with this, it does have a sharp blade, but frankly, that's not important with this. This one relies on weight. You try and cleave through your opponent's shield or armor. Now, I'm going to cut at you. I want you to try and hit back at me, all right? Very good. Not finished yet. Yeah, you're too good at this. Go away. From around 9000 BCE began the process we call civilization. Settled agricultural states were established and the ownership of land became important for the first time. Defense of the land and the new possibilities for trade led to the creation of the first walled cities and to the formation of the first semi-professional armies. Now, you guys will be armed with short swords or axes, with spears and with shields and with some basic armor. Basic armor and helmets of bronze or leather. So pick up your shields, follow me. <laughs> <laughs>